guys for the lighting. It is a glorious bright winter's day and I'm trying to work with the shadows and the sun but yeah let's just crack on. Uh, today's video is going to be Dishing with the Dirt by Nick Dwerden. So I picked this up, I wanted something completely different from what I've read recently, you know it's been like mysteries and quite heavy topics and big books and I just wanted something that I could fly through really quickly. So yes, I just wanted something really easy to fly through and this book was sitting on my shelf and I was like that is the perfect book. So this is um, written by Nick Dwerden and he basically interviews about 12, I think, 12 or 13 um, different uh, cleaners that work in the UK um, and it is really eye-opening to say the least. Um, so each one is slightly different from someone from a different background or a different reason why they got into cleaning or why they were forced to go into cleaning, um, what it was like for them and you know dishing on the dirt really. So anything that involves like behind the scenes of a job or like gets you into a scenario that otherwise you would never know anything about that's really interesting to me and what's more than like a tell-all book about people's lives um i will say the chapters are short and sweet there may be like 10 to 15 pages per uh person and that was good it let the book go really quickly and i flew through it but at times there were chapters that i would have loved to have more it just to be more elaborated on um and you know i can see why that maybe wasn't possible because um you know he was interviewing these people and they might not for whatever reason want to have told any more than what they said um there was one and he was um he was more so a bit like a butler and a housekeeper um and you know for whatever reason i can imagine um he probably didn't want to divulge about you know the family that he worked for um but like those tell-all stories i would have loved to have heard about um there was another woman and her daughter that um they'd done some forensic cleaning after you know like murders and things and also she worked quite heavily with people with mental health conditions um and she worked she had also worked um in psychology as well um so i thought that in aspect would have been really nice to have learned more about in depth but that is the nature of the book and the way that it is set out so primarily most of the cleaners are of some sort of foreign descent not all eastern european um there is um a lady who's spanish in here but um most of them with you know a few exceptions are mostly foreign um european based and i think when we think of cleaners that is in today's day and age what we automatically our mind thinks to and that is really not the case as shown in this book um there are still a lot of people that have cleaners for whatever reason and this obviously touches on that as well the reason why people get cleaners or housekeepers or maids in whatever you want to call them um there is someone in my family who is a cleaner i also remember my grandma used to have a cleaner um for like as long as i can remember they used to have a cleaner possibly not a very good one probably came for the the um chatting aspect and um the friendship aspect um but you know so a lot of like other elderly people they get cleaners and things in um some big families get cleaners in um and it touches on it in the book as well and it really opens your eyes up um to when you think of a cleaner you either think rich people employing like an eastern european person um or sometimes they get cleaners in obviously between tenancies and things um and it it just goes through all that in this book and obviously it has the backstory to why so many of these people came so there's like one woman um i think she was from a country either the philippines or thereabouts she was promised you know really great work here in the uk um there's obviously cleaning is really easily available for jobs you don't necessarily need many qualifications for it i promise all this one woman she was pretty much worked as a slave um and she found it very hard to get out of that family but it also shows that actually most of these 
um, people that come from European countries, they are so well educated. They have degrees and things like that. They have been to universities or done extra courses. They are very well educated in their own country. Um, and for whatever reason, they don't apply that when they come here to the UK. Um, mostly because of their English. Um, they don't think they've got good enough English skills to be able to go into the, the same profession or they feel the competition is just too high, especially in London, and they are intimidated by British people. Um, I think we definitely, as a country, can be a bit standoffish. We can be very competitive, and that can, you know, it's sort of that everyone fights for themselves aspect. Um, and so that puts people off as well. And for most of these people, they come to the UK because their countries have such high cost of living and because maybe they're not able to get a job for whatever reason, they just can't afford to live and provide for their family in that country. And that's really sad. And it's sad that they need to come to the UK and feel like we can provide for them. Where, like, I'm not going to get too into it because I don't want to get into, you know, all the things about immigrants and refugees and all that, that is a completely different topic. But you know, we have a high population as it is for such a tiny island and it's sad that another country can't provide for their own people and they feel the need to come to ours. Um, you know, it's mentioned in this book, they had dreams of what the UK was like and for some people it doesn't turn out as great as they thought it would be. Um, some people do go back, um, but most people end up, you know, making a living for themselves here. They make a family and then they start to see the UK as their home. Not saying that's a bad thing, but that is just the way it is. And one thing that just stuck out for me in this book is English should be just something that can be available to everyone. If we've got all of these people coming across and they feel the only job for them is cleaning, yes, there are a lot of cleaning positions to be filled. Not a lot of UK people maybe would necessarily want to go into cleaning. That's sort of the mindset that I guess is thrown around. From personal experience, I know not everyone, that's, it's not all foreigners that are cleaners. Um, but the majority of them feel the need to go into that line of work because of their English. And it's sad that um, as a country, we can't provide those English lessons for them when they have in their home country, you know, architectural degrees. They have been nurses and doctors and things like that. Um, and those are the sort of people we should be encouraging and helping out to fulfill these jobs that we so desperately need, especially like doctors and nurses at this time. So this book sort of, although it's mainly about like cleaning, it gives you sort of just a wider picture about the, some of the people that come to the UK, why they come to the UK and you know, what lives that they now lead. Um, so I really enjoyed this book. I gave it five out of five stars. Um, it is a book that I'm going to be passing around the family, I think. Um, it's lighthearted. It's got some humour to it. Um, but it also, it, it opens up, um, you know, a, a breadth of conversations, really. Um, and just to leave you on a little light note, there is one chapter about a company that are all nudist cleaners for the naturists out there. Um, so that being said, um, if you think you might want to pick this up, let me know down below. And also, I'm always open to new book recommendations, so leave them as well. So make sure you give this video a like if you liked it, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future book reviews. And I shall see you in my next video. Bye, guys.